Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In this special edition, we flash back to October of 2005, when an astonishing supernova shattered conventional theories about stellar evolution. The supernova occurred in the barred spiral galaxy NGC 266. The doomed star posed an incredible mystery. By conventional reasoning, it could not explode because it had yet to shed its hydrogen envelope. This means that it could not have formed an iron core resulting from the nuclear fusion that astronomers believe occurs inside a star. According to the co-author of a paper in the journal Nature, this might mean that we are fundamentally wrong about the evolution of massive stars and that theories need revising. But in the years since this event, has any significant revision of standard supernova theory occurred? The article points out that the doomed star, estimated at about 100 times our sun's mass, was not mature enough, according to theory, to have evolved a massive iron core of nuclear fusion ash. This is the supposed prerequisite for a core implosion that triggers a supernova blast. Now, it seems to me that people are not paying attention to their fellow workers because those people trying to model these supernova explosions have found that if all you are invoking is the gravitational collapse of a star once the fusion reaction stops when your core is mostly iron, that that model doesn't work. But here we go. We've, here's another article being surprised uh, because something that they expected to be inside a star uh, doesn't appear to be the case. In fact, the star is supposed to be too young to have created much of an iron core. And this is, as I said, a prerequisite for the supernova blast. One of the researchers, Avishai Galyam of the Weizmann Institute of Science in Rehovot, Israel, is quoted as saying, this might mean that we are fundamentally wrong about the evolution of massive stars and that theories need revising. The problem is that the revision never goes back to the fundamentals to see whether it's possible that the very ideas at the foundation of how stars work might be incorrect. But this is what the Electric Universe does. It says all of the observations of our own sun show that the effects can be explained simply in electrical terms as a kind of an electric discharge and it doesn't require anything to be going on inside the sun. In fact where we do part the bright layer of the photosphere in a sunspot it's dark below which suggests that there's nothing going on or nothing significant inside a star. So the entire model rests on simply beliefs about the original stories which are about a hundred years old now the beliefs surrounded and built up around that initial theory. So when they talk about revising, it's never a case of examining the foundations of this rickety building that they've constructed. It's like a listed building. You maintain the facade, the foundations may be rotten, but all you do is tinker with the interior. Despite this and countless other discoveries that contradict conventional ideas about stars and supernovae, Astronomers seem hesitant to ask the most fundamental question. Are stars actually fueled by nuclear fusion reactions? One of the co-authors of the article about this supernova explosion, Douglas Leonard from California's San Diego State University, said in a press release that the progenitor, that is the star that exploded, shows that it, at least in some cases, massive stars explode before losing most of their hydrogen envelope, suggesting that the evolution of the core and the evolution of the envelope are less coupled than previously thought, a finding which may require a revision of stellar evolution theory. Here we go with the revision again. If the star is not behaving as a nuclear reactor, which is suggested and explored by the Electric Universe model, then the entire story of the evolution and death of a star is purely concocted. It's built around an untestable series of complex nuclear reactions which result in the burning of hydrogen in nuclear fusion reactions, creating heavier and heavier elements until you get to iron where the reactions must stop. And here we have a star where it appears that it had a hydrogen envelope and yet it exploded. It hadn't converted the hydrogen into heavier elements. So 
all of these things, all of these anomalies suggest a radical revision, not just go back and try and fiddle with the uh, complex nuclear reactions. They are so complex and have so many special conditions that may or may not exist in the centre of a star that it is a very piecemeal, doubtful model. Some of the surprises regarding supernovae relate to their structure that we image, particularly supernova 1987A, which showed uh, three rings arranged along an axis through the star, which was supposed to have exploded. And it's just a beautiful ring of beads, bright beads. Now, that is not what you expect from an explosion. The other thing is that one of the recent ideas that has come out of examining very distant supernovae is that the universe is expanding more rapidly. And this, of course, introduced the idea of dark energy, for which some scientists have received a Nobel Prize. But here we have a model which is based on very doubtful supernova theory, also very doubtful measurements of or estimates of the distance of these objects, and really no basic understanding of the physics of the explosions themselves. So to use them as standard candles and then say that the universe is expanding more rapidly, accelerating expansion, is really <laughs> quite an incredible extrapolation of assumptions and possibilities. One can't leave it on the other until the whole thing must fall over. In the electric universe, an electric discharge is the likely trigger of a supernova explosion. In light of all the most recent data from space, how does the success of this theory compare with the standard model? The triggering of a supernova explosion, there are two main types. One is the idea that a star reaches the point where its core is mostly iron and the nuclear reactions cease, and then there is nothing to support the huge envelope of the rest of the star. So it collapses and then it rebounds. And as I said before, the models refuse to do what the speculators insist happens. The other model is where you have a condensed star which is ripping matter off a binary partner and at some point it rips sufficient matter off to cause an internal nuclear explosion which causes the star to go supernova. Now that also is a theory which is fraught with difficulties. Both of them are based on gravitational effects and the gravitational force is almost infinitely weak compared to the electric force. So these explosions, when looked at from an electrical point of view, are not so difficult to explain because the energy is available that much greater. And there is a very simple mechanism which is recognised in electrical engineering where you break a circuit and all of the electromagnetic energy stored in the entire circuit is concentrated at that break. And the Nobel Prize winner, Hans Elfvain, pointed out that the circuit breakers in space are called double layers, where plasma forms a thin layer with positive and negative charge separated over a short distance. If that double layer expands slightly, it can actually shut down the current across that double layer. So you have, in effect, the throwing of a switch. Now, the double layer can exist either outside the star, in fact, there may, may be multiples of them, and there may be uh, some very close to the surface of the star, and it is conceivable that the electrical disruption of one of these, or the throwing of one of these switches near the surface of a star would be sufficient to cause the electrical disruption of the body itself. What's more, these double layers tend to exist along current filaments which connect to the star. And so you would expect that the double layer explosions will occur preferentially at the poles of a star. It's not spherically symmetrical. It's not going to be an explosion. It's going to be a highly directed jets of matter along the polar directions, which is the kind of thing we see in supernova remnants. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.